welcome to Chet Chat and today with me on the show is Sumer Ved who's a second year student or a sophomore at University of Chicago. Hey Sumer, welcome to the show. Thank you. Hi. Pursuing this very exotic major yeah. called computational neuroscience. Mm -hmm. So, would you like to tell our viewers something about this? Sure. So, neuroscience has, for the last decade or so, been on this upward rise, um, especially because we've finally figured out how to look at the brain without actually slicing it open. So one of the emergent fields has been computational neuroscience because um, we've, we've understood the brain as being this sort of an electrical um, organ, which allows us to, you know, use. Uh, techniques we normally apply to computers to analyze the brain. And the result has been uh, the field of computational neuroscience, which attempts to uh, model the, the, the different perceptions of the brain using conventional programming languages like MATLAB and um, other such devices. Oh, so you pick up electrical impulses. Yeah, exactly. So we, we basically look at how uh, the human brain reacts to, say, touching plastic, because at the end of the day, that that sensation is just a bunch of uh, electronic signals in the brain. Okay, um, so okay. that's what we attempt to capture and model. Okay, so, so going forward, uh, this is leading you to decision science? Yes, extending the study of the brain in general. There are a lot of fascinating new studies, like for instance, uh, a, a professor in Princeton is starting this neurocinematics field, which is the neuroscience of film watching. Okay. Um, there is neuroethics, which is the neuroscience of ethics. So what do and they do? You're watching a movie and they plug electrodes in your yeah, head? Yeah, <laughs> so they, they basically scan your brain for activity while you're watching different movies and they see activations in different brain regions. And yeah, they basically hypothesize whatever happens when you're thinking of, say, the character on the screen. And that helps them understand how we think about other people better. Right. Um, I think it's amazing because the brain is probably the least understood organ or should I say the least understood thing in the whole world. Definitely, <laughs> yeah. It's the, the brain is the strongest processing uh, device we know of and we don't really understand much of it. It's really fascinating. Wow. So how did you come to this being your preferred major? Um, so I came to UChicago as a physics major um, because I was interested in physics throughout high school. When I came to UChicago, I was required to take um, a social science sequence as part of the core curriculum. And the sequence which I decided to take was the mind sequence. Okay. And the mind sequence basically um, attempted to teach students analytical thinking by using social science case studies. And in our case, these case studies were normally related to um, neuroscience. So what happened was I was exposed to a variety of different types of uh, ways to examine the brain from the behavioral level to say the exact cellular level and from then on I realized that there's a lot of physics in neuroscience because right. all the brain imaging techniques are inherently physical. Right. Um, you right. use magnetism and electricity um, so there's, there's a lot of physics in it yeah. but I guess yeah. the implications for that research are a lot different Yeah. Um, and that is why I decided to get into neuroscience. Yeah wow fantastic so time and again I've had students like you tell me how the core curriculum helped them to decide what they wanted to do. Mm. How did the college help you in terms of counselling etc? Did, did, did they help you to change your major? Definitely. So they have these uh, academic advisors which are basically there to help you understand what you like and pursue that particular topic. And in, in this particular case my academic advisor was uh, very helpful in helping me understand what my interests were by asking me questions. And at the end of the day he told me which classes to take and he pushed me on to um, you know, take the classes necessary to go to graduate school eventually. Um, so yeah, the college played a crucial role in my decision and my transition from physics to uh, neuroscience. So, so going forward, I can see two paths from here. One is a very economic, monetary path of, you know, going down Wall Street to say, why do people buy certain shares? Right. And other path is more research, academics to say, why do people decide? anything. Yep. Yep. So, so what's your preferred uh, path? Um, I think I'm going to go down the, the more research oriented path, the more research intensive path because 
uh, while money is necessary for you know research, I, I still think that the scientific world in itself yeah, yeah, yeah. is at a nexus of um, progress and development because we've only just like discovered technology is necessary to scan the brain, which provides a very unique opportunity for anyone interested in the field to really you know go in and do a lot of work and that's the path I want to take because I'm very interested in research as well. From a very young age I've wanted to contribute to the scientific society. So contrary to a lot of other people I know at UChicago and a lot of my own friends I want to get into research. Wow that's fabulous to hear. I mean you really do need people like you to Thanks. go out there and decode this brain. <laughs> yeah, not the brain. <laughs>
it, it was basically uh, taught by one of the leaders in the field who was literally at the forefront of the research. So most of the papers we read were written by him and uh, you could literally walk up to him and ask him any question about this field. Wow. So that was by far the most interesting class. I think that's the plus of being in U Chicago. Probably has the most number of Nobel laureate professors, I think. Sure, you know, yeah, there's this, one of them. <laughs> there, there's a shirt with uh, all the Nobel Prizes uh, <laughs> behind them. So we are very pretentious about that as well. <laughs> okay. But, Tell me, talking about another shirt, I read a shirt which said, uh, because I got waitlisted at Hogwarts. Now there's this likening to Hogwarts that, that U Chicago has in the residence halls with this gothic architecture Definitely. and all of that. But I read recently that the, the aging halls are being, you know, broken down, uh, I don't know, changed and then the new modern dorms that are coming up to mm -hmm. accommodate more students. Mm -hmm. So what's your view on this? Um, I think. So my experience in the summer was that they were actually restoring most of this gothic architecture. Um, and yeah, it, it's true that the new buildings that they're building are very much more modern, but I think there's clearly a symbiosis between them. Like, it's not like they don't complement each other. The architecture do a good job of placing these, uh, you know, gothic uh, buildings next to, say, more modern buildings. And the general trend is that the more modern buildings are the science buildings. And the gothic buildings are, you know, the classics buildings. So it, also that vibe is very symmetric with the subjects being uh, taught inside that particular building. So I think I think it's fine. I don't I don't see the gothic buildings being taken down. And there are areas of the campus where you can totally still feel like you are in, you know, Hogwarts. New, yeah, Hogwarts <laughs> or medieval England or. Tell me if there was one thing you could pack with you, what would that be? It would be food, <laughs> any and all types of uh, Indian food, okay. from chilies to uh, roti, I don't know, any anything Indian basically. Okay, but I've heard that the food in, in New Chicago is not so great and quite yeah. expensive, is that true? Yeah, that's very true. <laughs> the food's expensive and uh, Indian especially so is very expensive. It's not something you can have twice a day, every day. Um, and the dining hall food, I wouldn't say it's pathetic, but it's <laughs> it's definitely like it's good food. If, if you're American, you'd probably enjoy it. But for us from here, from India, who are used to, you know, home cooked food and uh, our mothers making us fantastic dals every day, for, for our palate, it's not so conducive. Right. I mean, and Indian food is approximately 10 to 12 dollars a meal, uh, which is not, you know, very affordable if you. <laughs> plan on having Indian throughout the week. Yeah. So thank you so much for being on the show, Samir. It was such an enlightening experience to be with you. And I'm sure we're going to ask you to come back one day and share more of your research. Definitely. Thank you so much. much. Thank you. Please click the subscribe button below. Like me at facebook.com slash chatchat101. Follow my Twitter handle chatchat101 or at Instagram chatchat101. Please leave your comments in the sections below. And if you'd like me to feature any particular college, please let me know. Thank you.